At the outset today, let me invite and encourage you to worship with the Church of Christ near you this Sunday. At Pyburn Street, we'll have Bible school beginning at 9 o'clock. Worship at 9.50, and then again at 6. We encourage you to participate in our services at Pyburn Street or at the Church of Christ near you. Now, we've been studying about the importance of God's grace, and the grace alone does not save. We must, in order to have the benefits of God's grace, we must do what God tells us to do. But God gave this plan many years before it became effective. In 2 Timothy, we read in the first chapter that in verse 9, the statement is that the Lord has saved us, called us by an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. In verse 10, he said that that plan is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. The gospel is that holy calling that we read about in verse 9, that he saved us and called us with a holy calling. In Second, Th second Thessalonians, the second chapter, verse 14, the scripture says that there the apostle Paul is writing, he said, I've called you by my gospel. And it is the gospel that calls us to the salvation that the Lord offers. And that plan was given before the foundation of the world, before God ever created the heavens and the earth. He had in mind the importance of the church, that he would build a church and offer salvation in it. I want to notice in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 how important that gospel is about which we read in Second Thessalonians 2.14, are being called by the gospel. There Paul is writing to the Christians in Corinth. And he said, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Here the apostle stated that it's the gospel that he preached unto them. It was that gospel that they received. We read in James, the first chapter, where James tells us to receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. That word is the gospel. And Paul is telling these people at Corinth that they had received the gospel, and because they had received it, that's the implication that they had obeyed it, and they had obeyed it, as we read in Acts chapter 18, so they had obeyed that gospel. When they did that, they were added to the church. And by which he said, ye are saved, is the statement made in verse 2. Now he said, you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you. Good people, it's possible for one to receive salvation through Christ Jesus and then depart from that position with the Lord. And here Paul says, if you keep in memory those things and let them guide you, then you will continue to be saved. In Mark, the 16th chapter, verses 15 and 16, Jesus told his apostles to preach the gospel throughout all the world. And he said, those who believe that gospel and are baptized shall be saved. Grace is important. We can't be saved without God's grace, but we must do God's bidding in order that we might be saved. That includes our having faith in Jesus, our being willing to repent of our sins, our confessing the name of Christ before men, being buried with him in baptism. And then Jesus said, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. These are the stipulations that the scriptures give in order for us to have that crown of life. We encourage you, learn what it is that God wants you to do, and then do it. We also invite and encourage you to worship at the Church of Christ near you this Sunday, and we pray that you have a good day.